Greetings and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing marvellously well. In this episode, we're going to run through the electrics. Unlike most bridge ports, this three phase motor only has three wires. So I'll show you the motor uh, and then I'll just quickly run through everything and show you how I've got it up and running. So here is the motor off the Bridgeport milling machine. It's an English electric one horsepower motor. This one only has three wires. I know what you're going to think, you're going to go, well, well that must have been rewired. Looking on forums and information off the internet, this is not the case. The British Bridgeport by Adcock and Shipley, the English electric motors came with three wires, but they are three phase. I thought this could be interesting for you to see that mine has three wires and that I'll be running it off the VFD. I've taken the motor off because I found a little fault with the pulley. It's got a little bit of wear on the central hole, so it's it's giving this slight knock on the lower speeds. Something to look at in the future. I've already figured a way that I can do the repair. It's just a case of getting time to do it. But for now, we need the machine running. Now we've seen the motor, you can see what we're dealing with. It's only a three wire motor. From my experience with setting this machine up, you'll see a lot of things about using the VFD inverter to control the speed of the motor. With this type of motor, you can't do it. The motor doesn't have the torque to have the belt sat on high speed and then use the VFD to control the speed. You can literally stop the spindle with your hands when it's sat running at low speed. You're gonna be using it just like it would be sat on three phase, plugged into three phase. This is what we're using the inverter for on my machine is it's just a three phase converter, nothing more. This end of the machine, everything is wired exactly the same as it was originally. You've got the power in, wired exactly the same inside the box. There's nothing, there's no fancy tricks in there. The forward and reverse, is still selected via this switch at the top so that's pretty much this end sorted it's actually a very simple setup it's just a vfd that you have to fine tune with the settings so the start stop button if you're lucky enough to have had a start stop button just like this which is a crab tree these switches i believe these are always open buttons. I have found these to be ideal to control the VFD for the start and stop. So I've managed to set them up for the start and stop. From the VFD, you send the common to both of the switches, and then you have a wire going from each switch back to the VFD, and then set up in the settings to control the start stop. So literally, I've managed to get the machine set up just like it was before, when it was running on three phase. Now, if you don't have a switch box like that or buttons that are always open, you could make shift one, components are available, you can make one and you could do it that way. Or you could simply just use the VFD. It does have a run and a stop button. But remember, if you do the setup inside the settings of the VFD to run the external buttons, these won't run afterwards. These are obsolete. So I'll show you the wires inside of what I've connected it to. It's pretty much as the instruction book. It's a simple 240 volt power in and then the power to the motor. And then obviously I've got my cable for the switch. So I'll run through those now so you can see what I've connected them to. So here we are, we've mounted the VFD on the wall. I made this little plate out of a bit of aluminium. Folded this little plate on my vice jaws. It's come out all right. I've got a bit of space here. I'm gonna put an isolation switch at some point. So I'll get you in a bit closer and we'll show you what I've plumbed in to where. Uh, so the power coming in is here. These are the two power ins and then the earth is over here. It's not live at the minute. It's disconnected from the power. So this is the power in. This is my temporary line in at the minute until we get the hard line and a isolation switch. So the motor's connected to these three here, which is U, the U, V, v and W. I've earthed it here on the, the earthing one. And the stop start switch, the front wire is here. Uh, so I don't know if you can read this. Uh, I've used the yellow one, green as the common, the RST, which is the run, and then the SPH, which is my stop. That's run through the settings on the uh, VFD. To get this motor running through a VFD using the three wires, you need to set the VFD to 50 hertz. As it comes supplied, it's set to 400 hertz. If it's the Hunyang, if you go to preset 13 and set it with the up and down arrows to eight and click set, it will reset the parameters of the entire VFD 
and it will revert it back to 50 hertz. If you do a quick test on that, it should fire up. But obviously there are things that you need to do. There are settings that you need to go through the manual. They are all in here and they are all described. And you need to input the details of the motor into the VFD because you don't want the VFD to burn out and you don't want the, the VFD to burn your motor out. So you need to input those. When you first look at it, if you've never not experienced this stuff before, it is kind of, it does look like a bit of a minefield, but it is quite simple. But the most important thing, the critical thing, is the 50 hertz. It doesn't run on 400 hertz, so if you've been hunting around to find out what it is you need to do to get the three wire motor, 50 hertz, on a Hunyang 1.5 kilowatt VFD. If you've got any further questions on how I've set up the VFD that I've not included in the video, or about how I've wired it, or any questions at all, put them in the comments and I will try and answer them to the best I can. And if you do like what you've seen in the video, please click the like button and that will help it spread further in YouTube. Thanks for watching, stay safe, Laters.